Well, I've been sleeping in a college dorm, way too busy to make any videos. Well, that and lazy. A decade sure is a long time. I would know, I've lived roughly 2.3 of them. And well, as a 20-something white man, I sure do love video games even more than my relationship. What does she do, love me? <laughs> love is temporary, but custom robo is forever. Mwah. Some game! And I need some goo gone on this bitch. So we're here, we're queer, and boy howdy is it another year. Another decade even. And that last decade? Had some pretty good games, I guess, about two per year in my humble view. My only rules for this list was that I had to pick only two games for every year, and that I had to have played it during its release year. All right, let's go. Yeah, bada bing, bada boom. Let's talk about some video games. 2010 was a hell of a year. We went to what, a rock down or something? Haiti? Oil? I like Limbo a lot. Spooky Forest, Creepy Black Child. I, wait, no, I, I, I don't mean, you know. I mean, he, he, he's a silhouette. Everything's monochromatic. And look, truth be told, he is a little creepy and a little black. I, in an extremely literal sense. There's just no bones about it. Limbo was the first indie game I ever played and it's always stuck with me. From the awful eerie spider that stalks you through your journey to the gross gruesome child death of which this game is bursting at the seams. Limbo is not a game that's easy to forget. It's a really great haunting time that'll leave you surprised at how cute it truly is. I was apparently into some dark shit in 2010 because my only other pick is Amnesia the Dark Descent. You know, the PewDiePie screaming game. Oh, he tried to me when I was sleeping every freaking night he tried to me. Ah, <laughs> gamers, am I right? How far we've truly come. What a f***ing- This game is cool because it was my first introduction to anything even remotely Lovecraftian. And I, well, we all know where that story goes. Ah! Amnesia unintentionally changed the face of gaming on YouTube as it was seemingly so quickly adopted by many now ubiquitous channels like the aforementioned and who could forget Markiplier? I sure have, but that's not his fault. I have dementia. It was strange seeing a single game blow up as much as it did. And it was really the first time I observed it happening in the YouTube space. So it was neat to be there and playing the game at the same time. Also, it's spooky. I have a lot of respect for Amnesia for doing so many things for the first time, even if they were purely accidental. And I mean, hey, the game sure does well what it sets out to do. <laughs> 2011 sure happened. We killed Osama bin Laden and Skyrim came out both for the first time. Unfortunately, I didn't participate in either of these things, unlike my father, Todd Howard, who not only personally delivered the bullet that fractured Obama's skull, but also developed Skyrim. Although he very illegally told me grisly details about his escapades in SEAL Team 6, he didn't allow me to play rated R games. So anyway, here's Portal 2. You guys remember Portal 2? Featuring uh, Peabody and Sherman? Me neither. Not too sure why. Portal 2 is everything a sequel should be. Portal was groundbreaking with so many aspects of its design and Portal 2 only pushes everything unique about its predecessor further. The puzzles are mind bending, the story engaging, and honestly, it might just be one of my all time favorites. It's that for a lot of people really, and rightfully so. Even though I only played it on my parents' iMac at probably 20 frames a second, it was still magical. Mostly thanks to J.K. Simmons. Oh, in case you got covered in that repulsion gel, here's some advice the lab boys gave me. Do not get covered in the repulsion gel. We haven't entirely nailed down what element it is yet, but I'll tell you this, it's a lively one, and it does not like the human skeleton. No one likes Skyward Sword. I like Skyward Sword. What can I say, man? This game has a lot of sentimental value for me, and that definitely doesn't influence how I feel about it at all. It, listen. Skyward Sword was woke. Woke AF. Zelda constantly is signaling she wants the D, but Link, clearly homosexual, never takes the bait. Or bi. I mean, isn't that a thing people think? He's like our bi king or something? Dude, I would've fucking smashed. What the hell's wrong with him? What, is he gay or something? It has the most flamboyant JoJo villain in all of video game history. And Groose, our real bisexual king, is, I mean, come on, an absolute snack. Yeah. Hey, if you don't like this game, I guess you're just a homophone. Bring, 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 bring. Hello? Who is it? It's me, here to cancel you, bitch. And yes, I do prefer Wind Waker's ocean to the sky, but man, this game has a heart that just can't be beat. I think that can be said of any Zelda game, really, so I'm probably not breaking any new ground here. I'm sure people agree it has a certain charm, but for me, that heart shines brighter than most issues people have with it. But I am speaking as someone who had a good experience, though. Apparently, a lot of people had major motion control problems with this game, but respectfully, it worked fine, and I had a great time, so... Shit. What went on in 2012, other than, you know, the world ending? I'll tell you what. Video 
games. Yo, who else was camped out in the snow waiting for a disgruntled GameStop employee to hand you your copy of Angry Bird Star Wars. I always wished that as a society we could collectively forget about Gangnam Style, but I recently danced it at a wedding, so I guess I'm at fault too. Stick around for 2017 where we can talk about how Psy was implicated in that South Korean corruption scandal. And speaking of corruption, Telltale's The Walking Dead came out and everyone was like, holy shit, games can be like this? Even though Telltale had already made Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, and Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people. Who's played that one? <laughs> Wish I had. I had a Nintendo Power, I talked about it years ago. That was pretty cool. I was never really into Homestar Runner. I totally missed the boat on that one. I think I was shown it against my will by some kid when I was over at his house or something. You know how you do that? Go to someone's house or better yet, have someone over at your house and then you get to just force feed them all the weird shit you're into. Like, I mean, they're essentially held captive. What are they gonna do, say no? I don't like this? Please stop? I'm in a position of power. I could ruin their career in one phone call and who's gonna stop me? It's 2012, I'll never be held responsible for my actions. Come on, buddy, let's play Telltale's The Walking Dead. Everyone seems to love it. I Oh, you like it too? <laughs> oh, me too, buddy. Me too. Walking Dead is good. Thanks. Hotline Miami though? Now that's a keeper. That's a game you can bring home to mom and watch her reaction as she says, oh Jesus, this is really violent. This is what video games are, Adam? I don't think you can play these anymore. And you say, but mommy, you can, you can, you can run up and hit and hit the man and stab and kill and it's fun and I like it. And she's all, yeah, I know, that's kind of the problem. And then you hit her with the, actually mother, it's simply a deconstruction of how we view violence in video games, forcing you to reflect upon your horribly violent actions and how you took so much pleasure in them, essentially telling a narrative that no other medium could. And then you kill her because Hotline Miambo taught you to. What a great game. Killer soundtrack. 2013 was a year of new words. Twerk and selfie were added to the dictionary, so you know we were having a good time. But you know who wasn't? Syria. On top of that, Nelson Mandela, Roger Ebert, and Lou Reed fucking died. Good year. Good blimp. Proteus came out, and without Roger Ebert around to say it wasn't art, we all kind of collectively were like, yeah, this is art. Rest in peace. Proteus, if you haven't heard, and it's very likely you haven't, is a little old romp through an island where God knows what happens, but I knows I loves it. It's honestly sublime. And unlike the band, if you really wanted to, you could still see somebody play it live. A lot of dead talk in this segment. Probably because Proteus feels like a game where you're walking through a ghost town. It's like if you made a game exploring the lost colony of Roanoke. Yes, I'm standing by this joke. What? It's good. And so's Proteus. Proteus, more like peaceful, relaxing, uh, orthopedic, totally exquisite us. You and me, baby, this game is about connecting. Proteus, more like Death Stranding. Another new phrase you couldn't seem to escape around this time was ludonarrative dissonance, which I won't be discussing. It just served as a great segue to talk about everyone's favorite thing where the game don't match to play. Bioshock Infinite. Remember that reveal trailer that had nothing to do with anything that happened in the game? Remember that TV spot that also had nothing to do with anything that happened in the game? I sure do, cause that was some good shit. Dude, this game looked amazing back then. It still kinda does. Dude, my heart never fails to skip when that poor sap starts falling out of Columbia. And I absolutely wish the game we got had any semblance of the spatial capabilities rendered in this cutscene ass commercial, but it's still just so good. Hell, even the original Bioshock reveal trailer was incredible. Bioshock as a franchise is basically just the shit. Really, like, I don't care what anyone has to say about Infinite, even though many of them are extremely valid points. I just want to do the shoot and ride to rails. What an awesome mechanic. Can I just say, and that thing that you, what, what was the thing? The, the, the arm that you rode, the, Skyhook. Yeah, the Sky, oh, man, what a ride. Hey, y'all, don't get sick. E Ebola, man. It was tight. It's 2014, baby. Woo! Don't you dare sneeze. You you sneezing? A lot of gay shit this year, and you know what? I'm happy for him. Not only could they now get married in 18 more states, but they also got Frozen to boot. Now, I don't really claim to know if the gays are all that attached to Frozen per se, but one way or another, they both sure did happen in 2014, apparently. And while we were out watching Frozen, being proud of our social progress, a little grassroots movement was making waves overseas. They got a hold of our attention and never really let it go. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Ice. Another little indie project that got our collective attention is none other than Shovel Knight. Ice might have been on our minds, but Shovel Knight dug his way into our hearts. That's what happens when you have a near perfect combination of graphics and gameplay. People, they like your game. Congratulations, Yacht Club. You beat ISIS. Thanks, dog. Appreciate it. Yo, but for real, uh, fuck ISIS. I don't want to talk about him anymore. What I do want to talk about is the Talos Principle, an excellent puzzle game. Legit, this game will make you think harder than any homework you can imagine. Unless you took AP Chem, you're that shit's hard. I wouldn't know. I dropped out of high school to pursue my career of becoming a full-time YouTuber. And look at me now. 
If you want to get thoroughly challenged on the way you view the world, poked and prodded by the game itself as to what you think on different topics, and really just get contemplative on the human race, then wow, you should probably play the Talos Principle because it sounds way too up your alley for you to not have played it yet. Yo, but for real! Guys, look at me, do it out here making a difference and sh Your boy out here being an influencer. Ha <laughs> ha. Jon Stewart left The Daily Show in 2015 and I'm still sad about it. Some deaths became as common as traffic deaths, so haha, <laughs> lit. But that's only because car deaths were declining, apparently? So it's a good thing. You know what? Rad. Speaking of cars, cars too. This guys eating beans. Nah, speaking of cars, I, uh, I I like Rocket League. Rocket League is very fun. I first saw it when I was hanging out with my very good friend, the peanut butter gamer, in someone's room at SGC 2015. I said, "Wow, what a neat game!" And he said, "Yes, my good friend Adam, this game looks, dare I say, tight as a motherfucker." And then I was like, "Wow, my super excellent mega fudge chocolatey super ultra rare friend, peanut butter gamer, thanks." And then his wife was all, "Yeah." Yeah, that's more or less a true story. They were very kind. Rocket League is legitimately amazing, and it's one of the most heart-pounding multiplayer games I've ever experienced. I'm so happy it's still going strong after roughly five years. Plus, being a hugely popular multiplayer game, you'd think they'd have found a way to f it up by now, but ah, damn it, never mind. It's still great though. It's definitely my go-to, hey buddy on Discord, we haven't chatted in like two years. Let's do a big talk and play the hit ball with car game. I have emotions and a soul, so naturally I ended up liking Undertale. I'm also a p***y, so naturally I ended up liking Undertale. It's seriously almost been five years since this was released, and that gives me the brain hurt, so moving on please. Toby Fox is pretty cool. He is friends with Sakurai. I want to be friends with Toby Fox. Hey Sakurai, you hit me up with them digits? Please? Undertale legitimately makes me very, very sad. Because for a game with goofy, pixelated, stupid, sexy skeletons and a goat mom, it really kind of activates them. I don't really want to use the word feels, but... Big feels, lads. I love the way the game lures you in with its deceptive simplicity, only to let you expand the world yourself because it already captured your heart with like two characters in the first couple hours. Okay, really one, I guess. But then there's naps to look, the frogs, the spider bake sale, the signs that really have their own personality. Okay, yeah, there's many more here than my joke reduction, but I don't really want to get into it too much. Getting Undertale spoiled is the spoiler equivalent of an acid attack. You probably didn't see it coming and definitely need medical attention immediately. <laughs> 2016. I think we all know what happened here, no need to linger. I'll tell you where I'd rather linger, Yido's Farm, the awesome name I gave to my Stardew Valley farm. Look at my works, ye mighty and despair. You can do anything in Stardew. Till the fields, give dog pet, go home and f my wife. Did I mention you can have a wife? Because you definitely can. You could also marry a dude, but I ain't about to do that because I'm definitely not gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not at all. <laughs> Stardew has got to be the most peaceful game I've ever played. Eh, Proteus could probably give it a run for its money, but it's no custom robo on the Nintendo GameCube. Actually, just kidding, this game stresses me out! Trying to get gifts for everyone on time for their birthday is extremely difficult, especially if they're not where they're supposed to be according to my 19 different identical tabs about one single character on the Stardew Valley wiki open on my browser. Ugh, I love it. I can't even escape the stupid sexy skeletons in this game. I have a skeleton in my house but not in the closet. It's 2020, they should be able to freely express themselves however they want, you guys. Think about asking the wife to let them join in the festivities in bed. Is it gay to be attracted to a male skeleton? It's not like you can tell. I like fishing in Stardew. But Adam, why don't you just go fishing in real life? This, this is me, your dad. I, I wanna know if you wanna come, like, this weekend? I'll tell you why, it fucking sucks. In Stardew, you can catch legendary fish, purple sea cucumbers, and even trout. Even though it can be stressful at times, Stardew Valley's my game whenever I just want to mellow out. However, sometimes I just want to fucking murder. Doom 2016 came out at a perfect time. 2016. Again, great year. Doom is absolutely fantastic, and everything about it, from its music to gameplay, is phenomenal. I'll keep this super brief because I already made a huge video about it and Doom 3, and this video is already getting way too long, so go check that out after this for my thoughts on it. But can I just ask, who else can't wait for March 20th to rip and tear eternally? And also juxtapose. Well, 
It's 2017, and Psy's been implicated in that South Korean corruption scandal. I can't believe I predicted it all the way back in 2012. But yeah, uh, another great year. Sometimes I forget that Sonic Mania exists, and then I remember, and I just get excited at the fact that it exists again, and then just play the ever-living knuckles out of it all over again. Oh no. I honestly don't think it's possible to hate this game, which is funny because I know people who hate this game. Ah, oh, yeah, sorry guys, I forgot. This game bad because Blue Hedgehog in it. Slipped my mind for a moment, won't happen again. Okay, but actually, I like this game a lot, and I don't know why I'm whispering, because I'm definitely in the majority. This game fucking rules! <laughs> God, like seriously, I love it so much. Like, can we talk about how amazing it is? It's probably my favorite Sonic game. You know, I I'm pretty sure it's my favorite Sonic game. Ah, I don't even know, it doesn't matter. This game rocks regardless, and I think it has big good. Talking anthropomorphic animals who don't talk, just run. Good shit. But 2017 was the year of talking anthropomorphic animals, I guess, because Night in the Woods is also big good. Again, this is just one where I just enjoyed it so much at the time, uh, but so much time has passed that I'm not too sure what I want to say about it, in uh, in all honesty. I planned to make a video about it years ago, and it just never happened, so... Most of those thoughts have kind of dribbled away. I had just started Big Boy College at the time, and many of its themes really resonated with me, as I had just reworked my previous awful college experience into a gap year. I honestly played Night in the Woods at the absolutely perfect time, and as I tend to mentally block out that first experience, I really had never even considered that that was why I connected with the game so hard until literally right now. Anyway, f depression, but my point is, Night in the Woods is a really good time. Genuinely, and not just because it was one of the only things I played that year, it's one of my favorites. Big Pretty. In 2018, some people were held responsible for their actions, namely one of them. Even though it really started the year prior, it feels like a 2018 thing, I guess. Remember the super blue blood moon and the blue wave? Super blue blood rave? Rave, I, I meant to say wave, but rave sounds cooler there. Let's keep that. But I don't remember them either, so don't feel bad about it. I've just been reading recaps of what happened every year for this entire video, so I clearly have the memory of a person with dementia. Remember the blue wave? Speaking of waves, remember the Goku wave? And by that, I mean Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I never knew if it was Fighter Z or Fighters, and at this point, I'm too afraid to ask. This game is like nine Gokus, and I don't know which one to pick. All right, guys, I picked Goku Black, and you know what that means. I'm going to say- Hey, look, I'm Goldo. I'm, I'm Goldo. I'm walking around. Yeah. Goldo for Fighter Z, pass three, please. Goldo, please. I'm bad at this game, but that's okay. I think everyone else is too. Even if they beat me, they're bad. I can just call them that when I lose, and they can't prove otherwise. Hell, they don't even know I'm doing it. Dude, I really haven't played this game enough for it to be on this list. I just really haven't played anything more. Yeah, that's the thing about this list is it was like I had to have played it during release year and uh, I'd never had any of the modern consoles of like the time, you know? I got a 360 like relatively recently. Same with the PS3, I got that like last summer. So uh, I still don't have a PS4. So like, that's rough. Got a hell of a backlog, you know. Second game for 2018 is uh, Deltarune, I guess. Yeah, you know what, it probably would have been that anyway. I want Toby Fox to write the story of my life because he'd certainly do a better job than God managed to. <laughs> Man, that sounds too sad, I'm sorry. I, Mom, if you're watching, I didn't mean it. I mean, please don't click away, I, I need the watch time. Deltarune is an anagram of Undertale, so in the process of switching over my love for Undertale, it was also altered and scattered, but ultimately came back together, one chapter at a time. And by that I mean one chapter. It's not even done rewriting my heart. It's like Tom Marvolo Riddle doing the thing he do to make it say he be Voldemort. I wish I could do that. What if I got a plane to write my name in the sky and then like scatter the letters all around? You'd never guess it, but man, add Aider the sequel to Ad Astra. <laughs> but legit, I want the team behind Deltarune to take all the time in the world. It's gonna be worth it, and I absolutely know I'll adore whatever direction this weird remix goes in. Big heart from Nader. In 2019, I'm gonna be real, I kinda just played Fortnite. Sad. Gotta get that V-Bucks dopamine rush. Honestly though, Chapter 2 really made the game kind of good again. I know Fortnite gets memed to hell and back, and an incredible amount of shit from everyone, and rightfully so in some cases, but you can tell people care about it, and at the end of the day, I kind of care too. I've spent too much money not to. I like shoot. Seriously though, other than Fortnite, uh, I did three hours of Luigi's Mansion, I guess? And some other streams, but really, like, you know, that's... Embarrassing, especially for an absolute gamer such as myself. Ah, 
I barely played, let alone finished anything last year. So you know what? Let's fix that. Hey, thanks for watching. Do you have a favorite game from a certain year? Leave it in those comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And like it said, 2019 games coming soon, but relatively soon. Let's give myself like a July deadline. I think halfway through the year is acceptable, but other stuff's coming sooner. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want more Adam Nader crap, and I'll see you around.